We all know that our population is growing exponentially. By 2050, we will reach 10 billion people on Earth. What we didn't know is that every single person on Earth today is consuming up to 40 kilograms of meat per year. And to produce one kilogram of this meat, we need 350 square meters of land. To put this into perspective, this is 100 times more of what we need to produce one kilogram of wheat. attention of the whole world for the passing few decades and for the upcoming ones will be on finding smarter and more efficient solutions for the production of proteins that we need for our day-to-day -day nutritional values but also for our culture in food. The main trends today are vegan alternatives, mushroom-based alternatives, insect farming and uh, lab meat. These are opportunities but they come with their own challenges. Vegan meat is a type of food that is totally free from animal-derived products, but it's intended to mock or replicate the texture and the taste of the meat. When this trend started, it was a bit inspired from the Far East cuisine, so you can find in the formula things like soy, tofu, tempeh, but now you can also find grains, legumes, uh, vegetables and fruit juices, uh, wheat gluten, vegetable oil, uh, flavors and flavor enhancers, and the list goes on. Mushroom meat is the high fiber protein derived from fungi. The top brand that is using this technique is called corn and it releases its first product in 1985. The process of producing this type of meat uses the uh, microbial, uh, usual, and natural fermentation done the, by the mycelium of the fungus to produce a protein that has a texture very identical to meat. Then the protein is extracted, shaped, seasoned, and then cooked to create products that are very similar to burgers, nuggets, and sausages. The third trend is insect farming, which is growing insects in a closed and controlled environment to reach a specific stage of their growth and then dry them into protein powder. I know this is not the most appealing option for some specific cultures in terms of protein alternative, but it is a very good way to use less resources in producing protein and valorizing waste. In some countries, they started by producing proteins for human consumption from grasshoppers, while in other countries, they are focusing more on the black soldier fly for animal feed, for example. Scientists can today harvest a sample of meat from a living animal without any harm and cultivate it in uh, conditions that are more in vitro or lab. Uh, simulated conditions to grow into a bigger sample of cells and be shaped later on into meat pieces. This is done by capitalizing on the wealth of advancement in sciences like biotechnology, bioengineering, science of cell, bioreactors, among others. Some countries lately approved and authorized few restaurants like in the Netherlands or in Singapore to serve some lab meat for the public to taste. This is what we call lab-grown meat. The first of them is how can we really mock and replicate the taste, texture, appearance, smell, um, of taste and aftertaste of the meat for the consumer to accept it. And also, how can we give the consumer the same nutritional values they find in meat, specifically in terms of protein and amino acids? Another challenge is to convince the consumers that 
this meat that is an alternative meat is really similar to what they are used to and what they used to order in a restaurant or to eat at home, like their burgers, steaks, or other things related to their cultures. And this is a very challenging but detrimental factor for the success and the growth of this industry. On another hand, trends like insect farming still need a lot of validation, lab testing, authorization, and legislation to make sure that whenever they are out on the market for human consumption, they will not affect the human health on the long run. Also, they need a lot of testing and optimization in terms of process of production to make it efficient and replicable. Optimization also applies to the most challenging innovation in this sector, which is lab-grown meat. Scientists are today raising billions of dollars in terms of fund to really optimize the process of production of lab-grown meat to become a viable business model, but also affordable for consumers to be able to buy it and consume it. Because at the end of the day, if we cannot afford it, how can we make a change and make people shift towards this kind of alternative? In food technology, the sky is the limit. When we talk about alternative proteins, it is not only the meat, it's also the egg, dairy, and other source of protein. So whatever is being tested now at lab level on the meat is also being under testing for the egg and the milk. Every scientist, entrepreneur, or expert can really have a role in this journey. It's true that Lebanon cannot invest that much money into the really complicated experiments of lab meat, but we definitely have opportunities in the lower hanging fruits of vegan alternatives, mushroom-based alternatives, and insect farming. We have all the resources and all the natural conditions to create vegan alternatives and mushroom-based alternatives. And we have the knowledge and know-how and the waste needed to valorize to create insect protein alternatives. By tapping into these opportunities, we can together put Lebanon on the map of food innovation in the world.